Hello, Morim here. In today's video, I want to showcase you or show you how to obtain very nice items that are going to be lost and missing in Act 3. There are points of no return that prevent you from getting those items. So for the first one, we are going with the Staff of Arcane Blessing. Now, Staff of Arcane Blessing grants you a 1d4 additional dice for weapon attacks and saving throws and 2d4 spell attack rolls. And it grants you the spell Bless free of charge. One might think that's actually not that good, since you need to concentrate on this buff, right? Well, actually no, because when we equip the staff and buff our allies, like so, you will see two buffs, Bless and Mistress Blessing. Now what happens if we cast another concentration spell, like so? Bless drops, but Mistress Blessing does not. The 1d4 saving throws and attack rolls and 2d4 spell attack roll buff is going to be on your allies for 10 rounds additionally. So this staff is going to be exceptionally strong throughout the whole game. You can find this item in the Underdark, in the Arcane Tower. For this you need to complete this whole zone. And at the end you will find an elevator that has a hidden button. Now if this button reveals itself, you can press it to descend down into a hidden chamber and in this chamber there is a staff lying on the ground. This staff is the Staff of Arcane Blessing. So make sure to do this Arcane Tower. The next item is another staff, Melf's first staff. This staff has a spell safety C plus one and attack roll plus one for spells and gives you a free Melf's Acid Arrow. Now it's only a green item, but the effect is exceptionally strong. It's one of the strongest items for casters before Act 3. This has to do with how spells work. Your Lightning Bolt is not an attack roll, but a saving throw on enemies. It's a deck save. Same with Fireball, deck save. Same with your Ice Storm, deck save. Same with your Radiance of Dawn. It's a constitution saving throw. Same with your Fairy Fire, deck save. So getting those buffs to your spell DC are really important, especially on those casters. The next item is going to be this staff, Ring of Mental Inhibitation. On a failed saving throw against one of your spells, they gain Mental Fatigue for two turns. Mental Fatigue gives them a minus one penalty to Wisdom, Intelligence, Charisma saving throws for every turn remaining. So minus two at the first and minus one at the second. Since we are using a lot of AoE, all of those are going to debuff enemies and make it easier to hit them with further AoEs. You can find this ring right here in this chest. It's a wooden chest in the House of Deep Shadows located here near the Shadow Battlefield Teleporter. You can actually destroy the specific chest with very strong attacks like so and the item contained inside will drop on the ground and you can pick it up. So you don't actually need to lockpick this chest. So the next item is a bard specific item. The Wanderer's Gloves. They give you one armor class and one bardic inspiration additionally. This means we get access to an additional bardic inspiration which we can use in flourishes or bardic inspirations. It's an exceptionally strong item for this class and probably the best in slot item you can find on a bard. Now this item is located in one of the chests right here, in one of the mimics or the harper chest. The harper chest can be found by interacting with this toy chest right here on the ground and one of those chests is going to contain this specific item. It's located in the underdark grim forge right here. The next item are probably the best boots in the entire game, disintegrating night walkers. They give you immunity to end web, entangled and snared. You cannot slip on ice or grease and they provide you with Misty Step for free on a class that cannot access this one. And this specific location is near the Ancient Forge, so right at the bottom of the Grim Forge, right here. It's going to be locked behind a ton of stones. One of those two corpses is going to have those boots on them. I can't remember the exact corpse, but it's one of those two. Now, like I mentioned, this location is going to be locked behind stones. Those stones will be cleared after you get, uh, for example, force weapon or someone that hits very, very hard or you complete the adamantite fort. So you can actually just walk in here, complete this specific zone, this specific boss. Everyone in this zone is going to disappear. So every single vendor or quest is going to be finished. That's a point of no return. But those boots can be obtained up until the Gauntlet of Shards. Even after the Gauntlet of Shards, this zone is going to be still accessible. But after finishing the Moonrise Tower Storm, this zone is going to disappear. So grab those boots before that. So this specific NPC is going to sell you the Caustic Band, which gives you two acid damage to your attacks. Works on basically everything except unarmed attacks. You need a weapon for this to work. Again, located right here. So the next ring is the Strange Conduit Ring. While concentrating on a spell, the wearer increases their damage by 1d4 
psychic damage. This specific item can be looted off of the corpse of the commander right here. Or you can steal it, doesn't matter, but you can obtain it by interacting with this enemy. It's a really strong ring and easily missable. We are in the Crash Yelek, right here, Captain's Quarters. The next NPC is the Quartermaster, located right here. That's also in the Crash Yelek, right here. And this specific NPC has some of the best items in the game. It's located right here. So I killed this NPC, so it's not going to be here. But you can find the Knife of the Undermountain here. You can find Daredevil Gloves right here. Uh, plus one to spell attack rolls and the ranged spell attack rolls get the melee attack if an enemy is in melee range. This is really, really good. And you can find also other goodies at this NPC. So don't miss this quartermaster. Some of you will probably just walk by this specific area and never look, but it's really, really important that you do. Or you can just kill this NPC later on. Doesn't really matter. Next, we are in the Inquisition Chamber, also in the crash up north behind the captain's quarters right here. There is an NPC here that you can kill during the fight, Ardent Kurth or whatever this one is pronounced. And one of those NPCs is going to drop the Arcane Synergy Diadem. It might sound like this one is a bad item, but if we use a concentration spell, so this can be Bless or Haste or any debuff, we get Arcane Synergy. Our spell casting modifier is getting added to our weapon attack damage, which is really good on specific classes, like for example sorcerers or bards. So make sure to loot those corpses, don't miss this one, don't miss this one, they do have those items. The next item is another ring, the Killer Sweetheart. It gives you a guaranteed critical strike on an attack roll after killing a creature. Now this effect can be stored and it can be used as a reaction. So you can kill something, a rat for example, then go to a boss and use this specific item and it will make every single hit that's going to be procced by this attack a crit. So the whole chain is going to crit. This results in some insane damage. This item can be found right here in the middle of the room. You need to press Alt, otherwise you're not going to see it in the blood and you need to stand really close for it to show up on the ground. I had some of my friends miss this item completely because it doesn't show up if you stand right here. This item is really small and you need to really get close to this item to see it. So, like I said, it's in the Gauntlet of Charm in the self-same trial right at the end. We are in the Moonrise Tower right when we storm the tower. So that's at the end of Act 2. There's going to be a massive fight in the middle of this specific room. That's the lobby. Now, in this specific room, you will have the vendors located right here right before the fight. But those vendors also have items stored here. So here is an Iron Bandit Blue Shield. This shield is a plus 3 armor class shield. Another thing that you really should not miss out on, loot all the corpses and clear their magic items. Some of them have very, very good stuff. Like for example, the Landhav. This NPC, I looted him already, but he has, if you interacted with him before, the stash of Disciple Zrel in his inventory. So a dwarven armor. This specific armor, dwarven splint mail. It has one less piercing damage taken, plus one to strength saving, frozen checks, and plus two constitution, as per 19 armor class. It's a really strong heavy armor and can be easily missed. Like I said, you need to talk to Zrel and convince her to share her special stash with you. Otherwise, this armor is not going to show up at the vendor. You can buy it previously, but it will drop at this specific section if you kill the vendor. All other items are going to disappear if you do this. So make sure to interact with the vendors in this tower before you storm the tower. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on some very, very strong things. So if you interact with this NPC and look at his inventory, he will not have that item. You'll first need to complete a specific dialogue by going through this door, the absolute door, and talk to the NPCs here, then go to the second floor and then talk to Israel and convince her to share their stash with you. This will unlock a few more items for the specific vendor. All other items this vendor has that are not unlocked by this are going to be unobtainable after storming the castle. And he will have this specific halberd, which is really strong, the halberd of vigilance. So you can find it at this specific vendor. And the near misser can be found at this vendor. So when we talk to this NPC, we can find this item near Missa, force damage. You can actually miss this item by killing this NPC in the first act. It's located in the goblin camp in the sanctuary. If you kill this NPC, you will not be able to find near Missa. You can also find gloves of crushing, plus one to unarmed attack rolls and plus two bludgeoning damage very early on. Those gloves are actually pretty damn good. So make sure to grab those. You can also find a really good helmet here. The marksmanship hat 
plus one to attack rolls and throwing attack rolls. So this one is really good. I will grab it and it costs only 22 gold pieces. Like for example, to have said great weapon mastery. And in this room is also another vendor right here. You can talk to her with Astarian to get access to a quest that will provide you with a plus two strength potion. This strength modifier is going to exceed the 20 barrier you're having in this game. So make sure to do this side quest before you leave Act 2. The potion is permanent, so make sure to use it on a character that's going to stack strength. But more importantly, this vendor provides you with the risky ring. Advantage on attack rolls and you receive disadvantage on saving throws. Now you can offset the disadvantage on saving throws with a paladin with the devotion aura. And it's very hard to gain access to advantage on attack rolls with this specific class with a paladin. So having that risky ring on them is going to be best in slot for a ton of different reasons. Next at this position in the last slide in, you're going to talk to Mantis. Now in this vendor menu, you can actually find evasive shoes, which give you plus one to acrobatics and armor class. Those are really, really good. So if you killed those NPCs in the first act or didn't save the grove or, or don't want to talk to him because he scammed you before, well, do it because he has those boots and they're really good. So the next NPC is the Moan. The Moan is located in the stables right here in the last light in. This NPC is missable very easy. So there is three conditions you need to meet so you can find this NPC here. Save the grove. Do not recruit Mantis or the Drow. And third, do not, under any circumstances, kill the strange ox. You need those three things to find this NPC. I talked to this NPC after the invasion, right? I talked to this NPC after exploring half the region and he still was here. So those three conditions seem to be the ones that make him go to Act 3 or miss him altogether. This NPC, however, has some of the best items for Act 2 and Act 1. For one, he sells you the charge bound hammer, a plus 1d6 lightning damage hammer, plus 2 to attack rolls and plus 2 to damage hammer because the favored weapon and weapon chance stack, so it's a plus 2. Basically, this weapon is purple quality. It's extremely good. But it has a condition, an Eldritch Knight or a Warlock Pact Weapon. And would you look at that, Will has a Pact Weapon. So when we activate this one, we get all those bony. And this weapon is really good for him. Now this NPC also sells Swordmaster's Gloves. Proficiency for short swords, long swords and great swords. But you additionally get plus one to attack rolls. On a class with great weapon mastery, where you need to think about how to offset the minus five, this one is really good. And this NPC also sells you the Darkfire Shortbow. Grants you resistance to fire, resistance to cold, and gives you the haste spell for free. And this one is a weapon attack plus two weapon. So he gives you really good items. And to top it all off, you can talk to him and give him the alloys you find, the Dark Iron or the Infernal Iron alloys, and he will craft you items for that. Some of those items include the flawed Helldusk armor, which gives you retaliation damage, on hit. It's also heavy armor. The flawed dusk gloves, which give you plus 1d4 fire damage on weapon attacks and 1d4 necrotic damage on unarmored attacks with a bleeding chance and strength saving throws plus one. And you can also craft a flawed dusk helmet on him, but I don't have that item currently on me because I missed a specific thing. You need the infernal alloy for this. It gives you plus two to spell save disease and plus one to constitution saving throws. So it's a really good caster helmet for, for example, Shadow Heart, if you're not using the wrapped headband, which can be obtained by killing the ogres in the blighted village. Next behind the last light in right here is a rubble thingy with a dead corpse. On this corpse, you'll find a shield, which is the shield of scorching reprisal. Might not sound like a good shield because it's only granting you fire resistance, but the class feature, the blazing retaliation, is going to increase your armor class by additional one and it's going to retaliate on enemies if they miss you. So if you're going for a retaliation damage build, this one is really good. And the next item is the potent rope. Cantrips deal additional damage equal to a charisma modifier. This one stacks with the charisma modifier that the warlock gets, so your average blast can get up to 30 base damage because three hits equal 30 damage. Since we have charisma plus 5 times 2 is 10 times 3 is 30 and you get some other benefits. So this rope is really good and you get this one by freeing the prisoners in the moonrise tower. For this rope specifically you need to talk to Alfira and Lacrissa needs to survive the escape. If this NPC dies you're not going to get the potent rope. So make sure that this NPC is talked to with this NPC surviving. So this rope is going to be the 
quest reward for that. Well, actually a lie, there is another item I want to show you. Right here is a hut. Here is the Gauntlet of Shark. So you can jump down here to this coast and kill those NPCs. And those NPCs will provide you with the Jabba. The Lightning Jabba is a 1d8 or 1d6 piercing weapon with 1d4 additional lightning damage if thrown. It has a possibility to shock enemies and has a plus one enhance. Anyway, this sums up the video. I will list down below every single item so you can look for it specifically on any wiki or timestamp those items so you can find them in the video. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you have any questions or remarks, make sure to comment and subscribe if you haven't already. You can also join the channel membership or leave a donation if you have the spare coin. So see you next time and bye.